Ko tararoe te maunga, ko waikanai te awa, e tipu ake aho i Gateshead, England, ko Wayne Maxwell takutane no wairarapa, Ai. ko Flynn Roa, ko Taura Oku Tamariki, ko Amajit Maxwell aho, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katou. Thank you. I will just share my screen. That one, if I can. <laughs> there we go. So I'm going to cover uh, community health networks um, generally in terms of some thinking and how it can potentially be supported. But in terms of setting the scene, I just wanted to provide a bit of context of my origins. You can probably tell from my accent, even though some say it's not that strong, there's still an element of Geordie in there. So I'm from the northeast of England, the two pictures on the right um, are from my hometown. And the one on the right is where I call home now in Cafferty. So I feel very privileged to um, be in Cafferty in such a beautiful part of the world and to also work nationally uh, to support the networks. So working with communities is something that, as um, Jen has said, I'm very passionate about. And this goes back a long way to my local government days, over 20 years experience in local government, both in the UK and in New Zealand. Um, we worked very much across sector um, within local government, but more um, later in that career was the community development side of things but more recently as a volunteer in my own community working with NGOs. And obviously the health system where I've worked um, in for the past 11 years, starting with the better, sooner, more convenient business cases, um, that was really the start of the passion for health. So obviously one of the pillars or one of the key areas of this Astana Declaration is um, working with individuals and communities. So for our network to succeed, it really needs that cross-sector approach. And it is stating the obvious, but it's not the most easy thing to do from my experience and from others as well. So this is a bit of an extract from the um, DPNZ Panui, the, the newsletter, um, the briefing, following the briefing from the minister, um, the health minister last week and obviously just provide some of the context about the review that um, was mentioned earlier by Jen. And I think, you know, it is out there that change is coming and it will be no less than transformational as, as GP and Z have stated. What was really good to hear was actually that healthcare home model got a shout out as a model that actually works. So it's a living model. Um, and it's a one that is adapted to work for people and communities. So onto the model of care, it was enhanced um, October last year, it was launched during that um, high crazy time in terms of the uncertainty of COVID. We, it was an 18 month long project working with community, working with many leaders and um, Fire Mill Samuels was really at the helm for us as our consumer who really, um, challenged us to do better for Māori, better for Pacifica and better for those underserved communities. So we strengthened the model for equity, consumer involvement and uh, honouring Te Tariti or Waitangi. It is underpinned by seven core values and again we had great leadership from Dr Dougal Thorburn uh, who led a Māori-led working group that really came up with these values and linked the model of care with Paiora Healthy Futures and Whānau Order. So it really just started to make sense. A lot of what was happening across the sector, um, we then started bringing into the model, reflecting um, what was occurring across the sector. So a lot of the feedback has been that people can resonate with this model more than ever. And for those that don't know the detail of the model, there are 38 characteristics, one of which is community health networks, which is the circle. We have an interactive model of care that um, on our website you'll see there's a whole lot of resources and I guess as a collaborative we're working to support those on the ground at the front line so that there isn't that reinvention of the wheel. Um, so we take the learnings from those at the front line and within organisations and share those far and wide and as I say that's where it's the network that I have to thank for that Mahi. 
So what we want to do tonight is really look at collective impact, a framework that I see as a common sense approach and um, a one that isn't rocket science. And I do have um, Chakisha and Masaru Omar to thank for um, sharing their work and uh, they'll provide some real on the ground um, experiences of using collective impact. But having um, learned more and more about this model, it really is one that I think can be um, framed around our uh, community health networks. So this is under construction, but what we want to try and do is bring a model that takes our network with Fano at the center and the framework of community impact around it. So again, we have resources for each of those. Um, now it isn't a formulaic model, it is a one that is adapted um, and we want to apply that collective impact um, as part of the networks underpinned, of course, by equity, excellence, sustainability, partnership and Fano centred. So just some highlights here in terms of those different components, in terms of leadership culture and AWE partnership, and certainly my experience of networks um, on the ground now is that working with AWE is essential. And certainly it's a learning journey for me. And um, we really need to get the leaders in our community um, working towards the well health and well-being of our community. So it will differ from region to region um, and it will be, it will take many, not just a few hands to actually show that through leadership. The backbone support, I resonate with very strongly because I've often worked in project teams where we are the facilitator of a vision. And I see that as the implementation side. Now this underpins the whole framework and reality of being that glue that um, makes uh, things happen, well stick together, but make things happen. But I do think there's a whole lot of learnings around that facilitation support so that the backbone has that authority and the respect to actually support the delivery. Um, and it'll be interesting when we do more learning around uh, collective impact, because I think this is such an um, important part. Obviously, the engagement side is important with our communities um, and working out where on the spectrum we want to be. Do we want to inform the communities? Do we want to fully collaborate? So it's just about being honest around that. The other aspects, obviously, setting that agenda, the common vision, um, and working with community to do that. So evoking that curiosity and that creativity uh, around setting the agenda hand in hand. And then of course we have to decide what is it we're doing and how do we prioritize that? And then we've got to measure our success. So it is backtracking and kind of going, we have this vision, but are we delivering it? So as I say, it isn't rocket science, it is a common sense approach, but it is a one that we can certainly provide some resources around um, to help uh, move forward in a, you know, a pace, I guess. So what we let do is work with our sector and get some feedback and um, under all of the different components, provide various resources that um, are already out there, but we'll kind of take the best. Dr. Andrew Miller always says, you know, take the best ideas and just share them or he'll say steal them. <laughs> but you know, it is really about that learning. Um, so some example resources, whether it be the terms of reference, the, um, the project initiation document, we wanna put that out there for people to get started. So <clears throat> in terms of being grounded in what's actually happening already, as I say, the, um, there are many across the networks have been um, progressing networks for some time. And I know that some of the learnings from Central Lakes locality, Helen Telford is the chair there and was happy to share with us some of their evaluation that is underway. And I guess one of the things that came out for me was um, the relevance of, uh, with community and providers takes time as relationships grow and build trust. And that's something that I think we can be doing now and, and many are doing. So it is those relationships that back up and um, within our communities. And I've been privileged to be a part of the Capity Network a little bit. And certainly some of the on the ground initiatives, the 
the actual um, whānau within community, some of their feedback is shown there in terms of how their initiative has imp improved um, access. So it's, it really is heartening to, to see those comments come through in a true equitable approach. And there'll be many more uh, examples, and I think it's, it's really about sharing the warts and all in reality. I'm coming to the last couple of slides. I really just wanted to share with you two quotes from some well-known authors I thought were um, supportive of our thinking uh, this evening and in terms of the first one from um, Wisdom of Crowds, uh, that whole act and um, each person to, to think and act independently as possible um, in terms of for a group. And then the other one I thought was quite interesting around taking social change, viewing it as in the same way as a disease epidemic, which is kind of quite appropriate for now. But if we really want that social change and that positive, then, you know, how do we get that tipping point? And I've shared this slide before, but I do think there's a bit of a call for action here in that um, either start the dialogue or continue the dialogue, but be courageous in those conversations. Strengthen your relationships and connectedness, the faka for Naunatanga, and um, a quote that I heard recently was collaboration moves at the speed of trust. And I think never a truer word has been said. And share those learnings, the good, the bad, the ugly, so that others don't need to reinvent the wheel. And then finally, we are providing as a collaborative some um, additional training around collective impact. And we've called upon Paul Smits and Dominique Samari from the Collective Impact Forum. We haven't got any dates as yet. So watch this space. If people are interested, we can certainly uh, provide that. And we'll continue to develop tools and resources to support the changes that will be happening um, on the ground, but really working with those, all of the early adopters as well. Thank you, and um, hopefully that was helpful, and I look forward to any questions later. I'll stop sharing.